Some people may think that being an open book means that you're easy to read, you're easy to understand because information is being shared with you. It doesn't mean I've been vulnerable with you. Welcome, 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 welcome. Da, 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 da. Welcome, 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 welcome. Da, 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 da. Welcome, 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 welcome. Da, 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 da. Welcome to a channel that has deep conversation, talks about life, talks about faith, and gives advice while all having fun. Let's go. Everybody, it's your girl Amanda Speaks. What's good? What's popping? Welcome back to another video. What's going to be in the squad? So, first of all, if you're new to this channel and you knew what Amanda Speaks, you haven't heard about me, you haven't heard about Mandy Squad. I don't know where you've been, I don't know what's happening, but we're so happy that you made it to this video. And if you want to become a part of this amazing family, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button right there hit the bell button beside it so you don't miss any further videos and without further ado let's hop into this video so y'all today we're going to be talking about the topic openness versus vulnerability and i know already hearing the topic like aren't they the same thing how can you be open and not vulnerable how can you be vulnerable but be considered you know too open like how, how does that even work? So if you're interested in finding out what the difference is between being open versus being vulnerable, stick around and let's get into this topic. So guys, I'm going to read. I'm going to read here and I'm going to put it up on the screen too so you guys can see it. But somebody once posited and said that openness is the willingness to tell people your story and vulnerability is your willingness to let others be a part of it. Now, it was also posited that vulnerability is giving somebody you know the raw you your raw emotions the raw mind your raw soul <laughs> versus being open can just contain you know sharing things that you've gone through already sharing things that don't really have that much of an impact on you sharing things that don't don't no longer really affect you that much or it doesn't have such a strong hold on you so a lot of times extroverts can be considered as being very open because they can you know, mix and mingle with all people. They can find topics to talk about from all over the place. They can share something that to somebody might seem very deep, but to them, not really. Why? It doesn't affect them that much anymore. It doesn't have a hold on them like that. And it's not as deep to them as you think. So they misinterpret them being open for them feel vulnerable. And some people might feel awkward even when they are just being open because they're like, how can you just share this so, this so freely? How is this possible that you're just telling everybody your business? When to them, it's no, I'm just sharing an experience. Vulnerability on the other hand, I put it this way. Openness for me, it's more of telling somebody what happened in the past. But vulnerability is being in the present. You're getting all of my emotions in the moment. So I'll tell you, if I'm being vulnerable with somebody, I'll tell you in the moment that I'm scared that I am scared of what's going to happen. I'm scared if I tell you this, or if I tell the person how I'm feeling that they might reject me, they might neglect me. I'm being vulnerable with you because I'm not telling you something that has already passed. And I'm not telling you something that I've already decided in my mind what I'm gonna do. I'm telling you something that is actively happening in my mind and I'm allowing you to see me in that state. I'm also allowing you to have an input in how I feel. I'm allowing you to have some form of impact on how I feel because what you say might also determine my decision. So the term open book can oftentimes be misconstrued. So you may think that being an open book means that you're easy to read, you're easy to understand because information is being shared with you. It doesn't mean I've been vulnerable with you. Again, being open, I can share information. Being vulnerable, I'm sharing my emotions. and. For example, if I tell you how I want to be loved, if I tell you how I handle conflict, that does not mean that because you know this information means that I've been vulnerable, vulnerable with you with the information. So example, I tell you how, how that I like to receive gifts. I tell you that I like to receive gifts. And you buy me roses, you buy me clothes, you buy me a necklace from time to time because you heard what I said and you want to show me that you are listening to me and you want to show me love. No, I'm being open with certain information. If I just take all the things you buy from me and just say thank you. To you, you might say you might think that, yeah, I'm loving on her. 
and you know we, we have this intimate relationship when the truth is i have not been vulnerable with you and vulnerability builds intimacy so if there's no vulnerability there's no intimacy hold that thought but if i only take those things and i say thank you and that's it and i appreciate it and that's it instead of that's just me being open instead of me saying to you how it made me feel why i appreciate you doing this at this time instead of letting you see the excitement that's on my face instead of telling you how this had improved my day um how this improved my confidence my trust in you that's me being vulnerable that's me sharing my emotions with you and sharing how i'm feeling in the moment in the moment if i just say thank you and i appreciate it and i love you i'm just being open it doesn't necessarily mean i'm being vulnerable and I don't allow you the space to be vulnerable with me. I don't allow you to even be a safe space for me. Because when you're building intimacy through vulnerability, I also there's a level of risk that comes with being vulnerable. And I hope I'm, I'm making sense right here. There's a level of risk that comes with being vulnerable. Because again, I am opening up myself to you and you still have the opportunity to give me your thoughts your input your advice your uh, i'll use criticism light here you have the opportunity to change how i feel to change how i view something to change my perspective to alter my decision making so that's just a small example and i hope that we understand the thing again jk franklin when i was doing research on just the difference between openness and vulnerability J. K. Franklin quoted from the book A Year of Living Consciously 365 Daily Inspirations for Creating a Life of Passion and Purpose by Gay Hendrix that said, Those safe, protected places you create around your heart, the ones designed so that no one can hurt you, have one fatal flaw. If no one can hurt you, no one can touch you either. And I found that very important because a lot of us are afraid of vulnerability because we're afraid of people accessing our heart and accessing the things that we have held on to for so long. But just as it said, if no one can come near us, going back to a video I made a long time ago, it'll be in the description if you, are, if you guys want to watch it. We have to allow ourselves to build gates and not walls because if we don't allow anybody to come in, we'll be stuck with ourselves. And that's not the nicest thing because we'll always think that what we're doing for ourselves is the right things to do. And that's not always the case. If no one can come in, no one can come to us, there is no way we're going to be healed from certain things. There's no way we're going to get a different perspective on certain things. There's no way we're going to grow. So yes, we might be fearful of somebody hurting us, but if we know how to navigate and build gates for our hearts and for our minds, it will be easier to let people go and to allow people to come in. It will be easier to navigate who we should let in and who we should let go and who should stay at the gate. They don't even get access to nothing. And again, vulnerability brings a level of depth, not just to the person, but to the relationship that you're trying to build. There is no way you can move with such intimacy and depth to the point where you don't even have to use words to understand each other without vulnerability and vulnerability has hard conversation it has challenging times but it is better to grow with the people that you love and know that you have a safe place you have a safe person than to just be open and then feel misunderstood all your life than to just be open and feel that nobody really knows the real you because you haven't allowed yourself to be the real you about around somebody that you have built a level of intimacy and trust with truthfully y'all uh, i have seen where the lack of vulnerability has caused some person to go into isolation to go into some self-hatred type mode it causes emotional neglect physical pain because the emotions are locked up within our hearts to the point where we're feeling physical pain because of a psychological issue we're feeling physical pain because of a psychological issue i've seen where persons have gone into isolation again going back to the point nobody understands me and it feels as though if you explain yourself they won't get you but you've never allowed yourself to be in that type of space you've never allowed somebody to carry the burden that you you bear or to help ease the load ease the weight of the burden that you carry and 
it's it rough <laughs> it's it's rough to always be the shoulder to cry on even when you're crumbling and i mean that to ourselves we rely on us so much that we don't allow people to come close to us and that can cause fear that can cause anxiety because especially if you you're used to being independent you're used to depending on yourself all the time you're used to having your own back it can be hard to let people in but believe me those type of persons who are not easily vulnerable but allow vulnerability when they trust you they trust you and those are the type of persons who when they love they love deep and when they hurt they hurt deep just the same so if we keep believing we don't have to be vulnerable we actually miss the opportunity to feel our emotions completely because it's almost like we're going to want to brush off how deep the situation is and um, how bad it hurts. Like, it, it's so fade. Just give me like three days. Give me a couple minutes. It's We miss the opportunity to feel our emotions completely and to just kind of sit in them. Nothing is wrong with sitting in, in, in a certain type of emotion for a while. There's a period. There's a season for everything under the sun. And sometimes we need to allow ourselves to go through certain emotions so that we don't become hard towards ourselves. We don't become numb towards ourselves and we don't become numb towards other people. We are our brother's keeper. But if we don't know how to relate to our brother, how are we going to keep them? How are we going to help them? How are we going to empathize with them? How is anybody going to empathize with us if we don't allow that space to be created? Here's the thing as well. It can also affect our awareness. I mentioned empathy. When we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable or the idea of vulnerability, what happens is that we become less and less emotionally aware towards people, towards ourselves. And it can damage us because when we want to be there for a person that we love, we have no idea how to. Because we ourselves have not experienced those emotions, we have not catered to those emotions, nor have we had anybody be there when we're going through certain emotions. As well as, Here's the detriment of this altogether. If we don't allow ourselves to feel our emotions in, in vulnerability and allow people to be vulnerable with us and us to be vulnerable with people, we slowly lose the ability to articulate our emotions and our thoughts properly. We won't be able to identify, oh, we just say we're sad. Why are we sad? Have no idea. We don't know how to delve deeper within ourselves. So we can't even articulate to somebody else how we're feeling. And that's a danger because unless you have somebody that's going to pry literally into your life, like a counselor type prying, like giving you the answers to what you're feeling, the articulation for it will, dis will basically decimate. It, it will dissolve. It will disappear. And it's almost like you have to go all the way back to step one to try and get what you're feeling all together. And no, it's not just happy. It's not just sad. It's not just angry. It's not just depressed. It's... It's far more than that if we would honestly just allow ourselves to feel and to get the proper verbiage for it. And sometimes the verbiage is not going to come from us. It's going to come from research. It's going to come from other persons. It's going to come from counselors. It's going to come from friends, family. But we have to allow ourselves not just to be open. Be willing to share things, sure. If we went through something, we're okay with sharing what it what We're okay with sharing the effect it had on us. But being vulnerable is so much more powerful. And I always say this, I've said this in a couple of videos before, not really sure which one. But vulnerability in the right hands is good. Vulnerability in the wrong hands can cause destruction. So again, in everything, be wise. Use discernment. Ask God to guide you. Because not everybody needs to have a vulnerable space in your life. And not everybody needs to see your vulnerability. But vulnerability is good. It helps. And it helps to bring you through life with people that you know have your back regardless. People who know you, even by how you text. I have a friend where, honestly, if I text a certain type of way, she already knows that something gone wrong, gone so. If I'm missing for a couple of days, gone so. I know when she uses a certain tone and when she talks a certain type of way, it, mm -mm, mm -mm. But how did that come about? The building of vulnerability. That even when we don't have the words or we don't say anything, we understand each other because we are now connected by mind, by spirit, by soul. 
we understand each other without an explanation guys this is all i have for today's video i hope you learned something i hope you guarded something i hope this was encouraging i hope this challenged somebody you know to find somebody to be vulnerable with even if that's a counselor a family member a friend something but i hope it challenged us to be better to grow and to evolve into our best self that's it again if you're new to this channel you're new to the family become a part of the family okay become a part of the family <laughs> well if you want to become a part of the family hit the subscribe button again hit the bell button beside it so you don't miss any further videos and it was a pleasure catch you in the next video peace